I wanted to ask about how can a healthy community be grown, and what and what are uh, uh, the things to bear in mind that could lead to uh, cults or. Thank you. Thank you. That could lead to cults. Like cults. Uh, wow, what a good question. I need Maimuna to answer that question. And you know who Maimuna is, right? My computer. <coughs> she's got that answer. And she's got the dates and everything. You know, you see how I'm one of these scholars of books? And if I lose my books, I'm in trouble. <coughs> if I lose my computer, I won't commit suicide, but I will not be happy. Right, so that, that's a very good question. How do we create community? How do we not create cult? A very good question. Um, first of all, what is it that makes us community? And um, we, we are a little community right here. <coughs> is it because we're all in the same place and the same time? We're all in the same place at the same time, close together? Does that make us a community? No. Because by some freak coincidence, we could have all kinds of other people here, you know, from different nations and different backgrounds and different beliefs and different outlooks, and they could be sitting here just as nicely as you are, but they're not a community. So what makes you a community is that you have things in common that you agree on and that are very essential to the way you view life. You have common beliefs. You have common principles. You have common aspirations. Okay, that's what makes us a community. <coughs> and if we were to go through uh, the group one by one, and say, do you believe this? Yes. Do you believe this? Yes. Yeah. Do you think this is good? Yes. You'd see that we differ on some things, but many things we agree on. So it is that shared belief and ethics. <coughs> Excuse me. It is that shared <coughs> objectives. This is what makes us a community. And in the end, this is what makes us a society. And in the end, this is what makes us a civilization. That's why when you destroy the beliefs and principles and ethics and other things that people have, you have destroyed their civilization. And this is why many scholars of the 19th and 20th century, among the greatest of them being Arnold Toynbee, the great historian, they said that the West is dead. Toynbee said that. Your civilization is dead. Why? Because all of these values, <coughs> all of these beliefs, all of these ethical principles that you had that enabled you to put this together and to be a society and a civilization, they are gone. And they were being lost very rapidly in the 19th century. In fact, the history of communism and fascism in Europe, in many ways, is an attempt to find something that works as an alternative. And that failed. So, you know, this is why you, as a little community, with shared values and shared goals, you are actually a little seed out of which could grow a great tree. And that tree would be a beautiful society. And it might even be a civilization. And countries like my own, they desperately need that because they won't be able to survive forever. In fact, they may not be able to survive much longer. Somebody's got to give them back meaning. Someone has got to give them back principle. Someone has got to restore family. You know, without family, you don't have sanity. Without family, you know, you're in danger of uh, insanity. So, um, 
that's the first thing in community. And we have a lot of goals. Uh, we would love to know Islam and to practice Islam in a way that is worthy of the Prophet وسلم, in a way that is attuned to the depth of this religion, the profundity of this religion, um, its ability to answer all questions. But that's in our tradition, even though many Muslims today wouldn't be able to help you with anything in that regard. Okay, so that's our desire, to bring that back to life. Um, you know, we talked a couple of years ago in the Zawiya in Spain about the male and female principles. That's our tradition, by the way. Nothing, nothing, we didn't make up any of that. That's profound, absolutely profound. And we need that in this time, especially our sister talked about gender. Okay, so gender, the issue of gender um, cannot be dealt with intelligently without metaphysics. God created everything in pairs. God made creation engendered. God put gender in creation, in everything. Even the throne of God has, is male principle. The kursi, the footstool, is female principle. Okay, and the kursi with regard to the earth is male principle. And the earth is female principle. Okay, these are things that, you know, are very valuable insights. And, you know, when you talk about gender, you've got to talk about this. You've got to talk about these principles. So, you know, be the change that you would like to see. Um, there should be female scholars. It is fard kifaya that you have women scholars just as you have m male scholars. That's basic fiqh. You know, fiqh never said that scholar is masculine. No. You have male scholars and female scholars. We've always had great female scholars, like Karima bint Ahmed and like Fatima bint Muhammad of Halab and so forth. Okay? You've got to have female scholars. Uh, who will listen to them? In the greater society, many won't. And I could even name countries where they might be in danger of their lives if they were to speak out as scholars. Because those are very misogynistic countries. Very. They don't even, in some of those countries, they don't even want women to be taught, much less to be scholars. Okay? That's wrong. That's very wrong. But what can I do about it? You think I could change that? Um, you think you could change that? Not easily. But we can be among ourselves what we would like to see at large. And that's what we try to do. We had the great honor to have Dr. Maryam Shaitani. And we had the great honor to have Dr. Muna Al Hassan. And maybe next year we'll have more. And, you know, was anything they presented inferior to what was presented by the men? Absolutely not. On the contrary. And if you heard Dr. Muna Al Hassan speak, it's like, you, that is extraordinary, what she had, absolutely extraordinary. And I want to say also that it's also a woman's point of view. Because the way she looks at things has about it a positive feminine principle. She sees things that I don't see. So I need to hear what she says. And so we can do that. We have to create a society that we are free in, <clears throat> free to be what we would like to see people be. And that can actually be quite successful.